We're going on an excursion today. We're gonna see some beaches, bays, and coves uh, for the beginning of the day, and then we'll end up in Hamilton. So, really excited. Going to get in the dinghy and get our day started. An anchor in there? Yeah. Well, we were on our way to shore in our dinghy and we got flagged down by somebody else who gave us a laundry card. And also, in talking to them, we found out that they are leaving for the Azores tomorrow. So, or today. So, um, that's really exciting and nice to hear that somebody else will be out there with us um, and able to communicate via sat phones. Good peace of mind. And also, it's just nice to know that uh, we're leaving at a time when other people are also leaving. <laughs> we're thankful for the buses here in Bermuda because uh, we're not renting any bikes or uh, cars or anything. And the people at the token station for the buses are really, really helpful. So that's good. We're gonna catch the 10 or 11 bus to Hamilton and then we're going to transfer over to uh, Church Bay. So the seven and Thus, we'll begin our journey, so it's an hour ride to Hamilton. <laughs> we are at Church Bay, um, just got off the bus, and we're gonna walk down to the beach. Prevention techniques, no cancer for Maddie. So we're here at Church Bay and we're about to go snorkeling.
understand what we're doing. We brought some pizza from last night to eat for lunch. So we're having a little beach picnic. wonderful lunch. So we're walking back towards Horseshoe Beach because they have showers there. And that means that we get to shower with hot water, fresh water, and running water. We haven't had one of those in a long time. Like we're always having the pump and it's not the same. And then after the shower, then we're gonna get all dressed up and we're gonna head to Hogpenny. Cause that's a restaurant that Maddie's parents went to when they were here on their honeymoon. Super, super fast race boat. And next to it is an Amoka. So those are set up as single-handed round the world racers used in the Bendy Globe. It's super cool to see them, but it's kind of sad that we're so close yet so far I can hardly see them. What is happening right now? <laughs> They went to the hog penny as like a special treat. And then when I was 16, we came back here and went to the hog penny. So now it is very important that we go to the hog penny. <laughs> because we were just taking too long. I mean, it's completely understandable. He had obligations and we didn't, we couldn't guarantee that he could make it home by the time that they happened. So he felt more comfortable heading home and um, the entire way here, he was just, he was very stressed and impatient about our pace and um, he knew coming in that we had the electric motor and that, you know, nothing's guaranteed with us in terms of time. But on the other hand, um, I mean, we took 20 days to get here, which is ridiculous. So we were actually um, also in favor of him getting off the boat here just because we felt so bad coming up here and it was like this added stress because we weren't going to get him there on time. So with just me and Herbie, we don't have a time restraint and we can take as long as we need. So I feel very confident with just the two of us. The only thing that's going to be a challenge is the watch schedules. Now that there are just two, it's going to be longer watch schedules and less sleeping. But it'll, it'll work itself out. We'll get into a rhythm and we'll figure it out. Uh, the boat work and everything, the sail changes, we're, we're totally fine with that. The weather, we're very comfortable out in the ocean. We have a lot of experience now with all kinds of weather. <laughs> 
we are now in the westerlies, we're in the route, we just need to go north and we'll be taken straight over to the Azores. Nothing is certain. And that's sailing. That's how it is. So it was frustrating on the way here, but we gained a lot of experience. And we got to see Bermuda, which I've noticed that on our trip, <laughs> That's been kind of the theme. We take longer than we think, and then we get to see these amazing places that we would not have seen otherwise. So, that's just kind of the story of Maddie and Herbie. <laughs> Crystal Caves, no, if you could let us know. A really long time. Well, we've been sailing for a year now okay, nice. um, down the coast of the U.S. Right. But uh, we sailed here from the Bahamas, okay. and it took us 20 days. Ooh. Those, it's no really wind. not supposed to take that long, but we got stuck in some crazy stuff. Whoa. Okay. Some storm activity out there? No, just no the wind. Opposite. Okay. No wind at all. No yeah. wind yeah. at all, so we just kind of sat there. Yeah, you know, on average you do like 80 to 100 miles a day, right. and we're doing between 9 and 20. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh my God. You don't want to use up too much, uh, too much of your fuel unless you really need to. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, well, we, we do well, an we, electric motor, so, so no, we don't, yeah. we yeah. don't we have to have sit and wait. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this is incredible. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. This cave that we're in today, this would be the fantasy cave. And uh, this fantasy cave would have been discovered back in 1909 by uh, you know, a man by the name of Arthur Haycock. He lived right above the cave. And one day he was burning some leaves and some shrubbery uh, you know, right above. He sent the neighbor's kid down for him. And him do all the further searching, right? So a very smart, wise man. And uh, about a year later, in 1910, this cave would have been opened up for the first twist again. But in terms of the cave, the actual age, this cave is between 2.5 and 3 million years old. So it's a very, very old cave system. So if you look around, you're going to see a lot of reds, browns, and oranges. All these different colors you're going to see around here are all reflected from what's on the surface. So in Bermuda soil, we have quite a bit of clay. And inside of that clay is going to have called iron oxide. So as that water is making its way, it's extracting all the dyes from the iron oxide. That's going to stain the rocks and then also create a few formations in some of those hues and colors as well. Now, the humidity in this cave is at a rate of about 100%. And the reason why it's so high is because we only have one opening at the very surface. So it's all the air is making its way in, there's no other outlet for it. So it just stays in here, so it's very warm, very moist, plus the 100% humidity we have here today. Now this condensation latches onto all sorts of surfaces, and the calcium carbonate that comes in from the limestone is going to eventually uh, just be left behind where that water would have uh, been, and it's going to pop up and form what you have right up here called a popcorn or cauliflower formation. So you'll be finding quite a few of these popcorn or cauliflower formations because this cave does have such a high humidity. bottom of these steps, this tunnel right here is a man-made hmm. So all of this was blasted out, it took like two years to do that with dynamite, from uh, 1912 to 1914. When that limestone crystallizes, leaves this white stuff up here, this is calcite, and these are the very beginnings of the formations that cover the entire inside of this cave you guys are about to This is 
<laughs> and it's not cold in here. I expected it to be cold. This is ocean water that has a clear passageway to the outside. Top of my head at high tide is just up here. Huh? All right, so the lighthouse has been measured at 14 feet tall <laughs> in about 25 feet of water. The castle, 35 feet tall mm -hmm. in about 50 feet of water. Whoa. This is the lag night. Formed when this cave was completely dry before the last ice age. That was so cool. Um, just something totally different from what we've been doing. This is the swizzle, which is the drink of Bermuda. And it was invented here at the Swizzle Inn in 1932. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, the swizzle. We're in the botanical gardens, and um, they look beautiful. So, we've got the Zen garden here, the Parisian garden there, and then, oh wait, no, I was wrong. Got many gardens to see. One of the things we really love about our mantis and why we bought it and not a rock nut is we got Chinese takeout to have for dinner tonight. <laughs> Finally back out in the ocean, we left Bermuda and we're 
we're on our way to the Azores. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and message us directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below. We're gonna see some beaches, bays, and... Beaches, bays, and... Church, Hamilton. Church. Cove.